and start recording. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. Come on in. Welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft, which is exactly what we're doing at the moment. Drinking tea and doodling. Don't get better than that, eh? Come on in. It's very cold here in Kent and in East Sussex down the south east. What about where you are? Hmm? Where are you anyway? Where are you? Come on in. Good morning, Helen. You're always at the top of the list. <laughs> That's lovely. It's time for clarity today. Come on in. I thought we could um, we could glaze our glaze our cups today. Good morning, everybody. Come on in. Early to the party. Always good to be early, just in case the cameras or the batteries or something's gone wrong. Hey. Yeah, we've just got a glazer. We've got a glazer cups today, haven't we? A bit of colour, add a splash of colour, a little bit of shading. Be nice. Did you manage to get your work done, your penning, and uh, and rub out the pencil lines? Looks good when you do that, doesn't it? Eh? Are you pleased with your work? Come on in. It's good to have your company. Good morning, Hilda. Good morning, Josie and Sonia. There they all are, and Melanie and Elizabeth. Lovely, and it always the same people. We're obviously feeling the benefits of this, aren't we? Cool, what a game this is, eh? Yeah. Did you see the pottery throwdown last night? That was fun. I do like that New England, uh, the Irish presenter. She's fabulous, isn't she? She really is a scream. I think she lifts it so, she kind of lifts the mood. It's such a pleasure. She make me laugh and she, you know, it's very good, very good. I enjoyed it much more last night. I almost, between you and me, I almost didn't watch it because I don't like sort of Jeopardy television. You know, I don't like seeing people's dreams getting crushed. But then I also think, well, you volunteered, you know. I remember somebody at the studio, the, art, the pottery studio where I go, they said, why don't you sign up? I thought, you must be bloody joking. <laughs> The one, the one thing that I really enjoy on my own, nobody watching. <laughs> you think I'm going to go public with my mediocrity? I don't think so. So no, that's that, that's never going to happen. But um, I'm nowhere near as good as they are. Mind you, it was funny, you know, because I've been doing pottery for a couple of years now and I was watching last night and I'm no expert, blimey, I really am no expert. And what they were having to do is quite, there was a lot in there, you know, like making lids fit for a start. And and I was watching them throwing those cheese, these cheese domes. And I thought, you're going too fast. I said, I, I was thinking, the, the lady with the black hair, I was thinking, wheel's too fast, wheel's too fast, wheel's too fast. And then all of a sudden it went, it just splattered and I thought yeah we was too fast it's funny how you know you know and then there was somebody else it was they were um they were shaving you know like cleaning up and uh turning as we call it turning the, and, and just cleaning up the sides and that and uh, and I was watching them do that and I thought wheels too fast <laughs> I thought you're not allowed for any mistakes here because the wheel was flying and I think what happens is when you get nervous or you're under stress your foot automatically goes down on the pedal and then it's you know yeah if I was if I had anything to say about last night it would slow down slow the wheels down you know it just you could see it it was an accident waiting to happen but it's really fascinating isn't it hey eh? come on in and and I was thinking I'm going to set myself, I said to Dave, do you know what, I might, I might set myself their challenge. So, so if I get time, I mean, it's time, it's time for me. I thought, I'll give her a go. I'll have a go um, and see how I get on with me. I think those, chal those chalices are going to be, bit, they look more like egg cups, didn't they? The, um, the wine goblets or whatever they were. Um, yeah, they're quite a challenge, you know, going in and out like that. But it was all about the time, wasn't it? You couldn't do anything in the time they were given. Um but uh, yeah, I, I and the other thing that was challenging was getting two the same, you know, like the the chutney jars or the pickle jars, in the with the cheese. 
uh, dome to get two identical. That's the tricky one. So you could do one, but get the second one the same, not so easy. That's where I'm at at the moment, trying to get things to look the same, uniformity, to be able to replicate something. Not easy. I, I wanted to show you because I wanted to show you my three plates. So these three plates, these are these are just come out the the bisque fired now. I'm dead chuffing what I'll show you. So I've got my three plates. You can see at a glance from above that they're not. They're all the only thing they've got in common is that they're round, right? But you can see sizes. Nah, not really. There are definitely three different sizes going on here. You see it from the side. Look, look, look. Now, these are all supposed to be, that this was my attempt at trying to be identical. Absolute rubbish, right? So, no, not rubbish. I mean, they're lovely, but you wouldn't, you would, <laughs> you couldn't sell them as a set of six, that's for sure. First of all, there's only three of them. Look, the bottoms are nice. What I'm chuffed with is the inlay. You see this, this inlay? So that is actually, it's slip. So I, I, when it was still wet, like leather hard, you could see what they were doing yesterday. Um, I, I kind of, I dug a trench in there, right? And then I put slip, like coloured, like liquid clay almost, like slip inside there, let it dry and then shaved it off again. See, so when it fires, it's actually, it's not painted on, it's actually part of the, it's, inte it's integral. I like that, don't you? So, so that was my, my experiment for that one. But check out the different, look, see that the, the slip was a big hit, got that right. Um, but the, the shapes are all different. Like I'll show you from the front. I'll show you, look. So that one's like that. That one's like that. They're, they, they, they're different, trust me. That one's late, late. This one's high. You couldn't drink soup out of that one. You could possibly do soup out of that one. Um, and then this one, it went the other way. It didn't go, it didn't splay it went like that which I like I like that one I mean if I if I had to do it again I'd try this one again so that's my challenge at the moment is trying to get three things the same look <laughs> what do you think yeah no but they're round and they're the same size and now I've got to glaze them I've got to glaze them so that's the next challenge is do I do clear, do I do white, what do I do, you know, I'm, glazing is another thing that I'm, so when I was watching them last night on, in the throwdown, if you were watching, and they just dumped, when, the, when the, the guy that ended up having to leave, when he just dumped his work in the glaze, I thought, in the white glaze, I thought that's way too thick and way too much. And it was way too thick and way too much. And it's not that I know, but you just get a feel for what it looks like. That was, whoa, he should have wiped it all off and gone naked clay. It would have looked better than that and it wouldn't have stuck. But you have to know that, you know, these guys are really good working under pressure like that, you know. It was quite fascinating. Yeah, quite interesting. So I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to, I'm going to give it a go. Great distraction. Great distraction. I've got all the gear and no idea down there, but I'll give it a go. And and I'll show you what these look like when I've glazed them. I might glaze all three of them differently, just as for experimenting. You know, this is the this is the best part of it. And maybe it's for you as well. Is when you you know you're no expert. I'm no expert, right? I know a little bit. But the only way I'm gonna learn more is by experimenting. Okay, by pushing the boat out. Same for you with everything that we're doing here in the Shack Shack. And, uh, and so I'm not emotionally attached to these, you know. They're just, you know, it's, it's result. I work that one out. Now I've got to work out the next thing. And then, so if I use all three of them as, as experiments, I'll get three completely different things. But, you know, just trying different glaze, glaze techniques. Here we go, you see other processes and I think the best part of art and craft whatever we're doing with our hands it's that it's that phase in the beginning where you don't know what you're doing and it's a blank canvas you know and I mean it's there's a ignorance it's that word ignorance but ignorance has a negative connotation I don't mean it in that regard I mean like ignorance as in not knowing blank canvas ignorar you know, it doesn't mean to ignore, it means to not know. And um, 
and to not know stuff is like a really exciting time because that's the time where you can soak up information and so it's it's positive it's a positive time what do you do when you know it all what do you do when you know it all it's like well i know it all now i've done it all i've know i know it all it's boring do you see what i mean so in during that phase when you don't know anything that's great i i that's my favorite time it's like the it's like the honeymoon of a, of an art. It's like the the honeymoon of a marriage. We you know when you're learning and t- testing things out. It's good, good, good. Yeah. So there you are. That's what I'm at. And I and maybe if I get time this week, I'll have a go at a, a dome and see what I can come up with. Make sure that yeah. That's my that's my passion. What's your passion? Have you got a passion when it comes to crafting? Is it parchment? Is it doodling? Is it colouring? What is it that you like doing? Hmm? Where do you get absolutely absorbed, like in it? Hey, it's good for you. It's good for you when you find something. It really is. You know, and that first part of it is the best part for me. Because you get so many eureka moments. You get so many moments where you have to fall off the horse. You get back on the horse and try again. I know, but... That's the exciting time. Once you can ride the horse, then what are you going to do? You've, you've learned how to ride the horse now. <laughs> ride the horse bareback. <laughs> ride the horse back to front. Ride the horse side saddle. Ride the horse blindfold. I don't know. <laughs> but once you learn to ride a horse, you've, ri- you, you've learned to ride a horse, haven't you? Right, come on, we're going to learn how to glaze these cups now. (laughs) Like, come on, this is what we've done. Have you done yours? I did mine. I did mine. I like, I like, I like, I like a lot. Kept it simple. I looked at some of your fantastic artwork on Clarity Worldwide. Goodness me, you are so good. Yeah, brilliant work. Brilliant work. Brilliant work. Stuart's in the building with you today. So if you have any questions or if you're looking at anything, looking for anything on the website or you need advice, ask our friend Stuart. He knows the answers, I should think. Um, And what I want to do today is look at at colouring this in. Now, if you wanted to, you could just go with shading, couldn't you? Just grey work, black and white. But I thought a splash of colour would be lovely. So I looked at some of my favourite colours, favourite colours, and um, what would look good together. You know, like mm, Mediterranean. Think Mediterranean, think warm, think Spanish, think Spanish colours, Moroccan that kind of, you know, that kind of colour. Let's have a look. I um, So I was looking at the colours. So that's where we're going to go. But before we do that, I think let's, let's we're going to do that in a minute. What I also want to do is what are we going to call our work? What are we going to cl- call our work? What I did was, as a tip, right, I took a piece of tracing paper because that's what, that works for me. I took a piece of tracing paper and then I, I used it like this. I'm going to call mine, wait for it, a moment of clarity. <laughs> right? A moment of clarity. Let me get my good glasses on. But T as in clarity. Oh, it was too good to not use, friends. Hey, a moment of clarity. Look, a moment of clarity. So I got a bit of tracing paper. And then I, I tried it with uppercase and then I thought, actually, this is much swirlier than that. It's much more, yeah, much more romantic than that. So I thought, right, we're going to go uh, uppercase moment and then I'm going to use my normal scripty writing. Then I'm going to put of, then I'm going to put a big C L A R I, then a dash and then a lovely T, a moment of clarity. There you go. That's me sorted it's coming a bit closer shall we see if you can there you go a moment of clarity what are you going to put in yours i i woke up with faith hope and charity charity i was on the tea thing beauty a thing of beauty is a joy forever and all that good stuff i was on the tea bit that was my play on words but i think i thought hang on a minute i've got a company that's got tea at the end a moment of clarity okay 
So now I know what it looks like. That's how I like it. Now I've got choices, haven't I? If I'm if I'm really comfortable with that, now I can go to best. So what I'm doing now is I'm really I'm writing out my script again like this. Cool, I'll tell you what else impressed me on the throwdown was the lady with the, the, the one that did the dog. She won it, Potter of the Week. The way she drew or wrote around the outside of the, you know, she and I thought that's what we do. I thought, I bet we'd all be good at that. And then I thought, well, hang on a minute. But, but when she fired it, what did she use? Oh, then I found out, right, that there are such a thing as underglaze pens. Hello, straight on Amazon order those pens, I said. Don't delay, Dave. <laughs> yeah, underglaze pens. My potting is just about to change shape. So I've just found out that I can doodle, I can do -do doodle with ceramic pens, underglaze pens. <laughs> there you go. That was an eye opener. That was worth watching. I didn't know that, you see. I didn't know that. I, I did not know that. Uh -huh. How did I miss that one? Being a doodler and all that. Right. Come on. Number two. A moment of clarity. So I've done that and I like the layout on that and I don't think I can improve on it. So I've gone over it a couple of times. What I'm doing here is I'm layering up the graphite. I'm layering up the lead on that. See, because then what I want to do, I'm, I want it for best. So now I'm going to go to the back. I'm using an HB pencil. So now I'm going over the back because obviously it's back to front. So I've got to... All I'm trying to do now, I'm writing back to front, is so that, cool, that's not that easy, that's not that easy either. I can tell you. This is, reminds me of, um, of, this reminds me of parching, groovy. Right, A, R, I, dash, T, what's that say? T, clarity. There we go. Right, so I've done it that way around on my scrap. Now I can transfer this onto my best. There. Nice. Hold it in place. Tricks and tips, tricks and tips. Yeah. Tricks and tips. So I pop that in there like that. It's amazing when I'm watching the throwdown. If you did watch it, the uh, the Irish lady, the presenter, what a fantastic uh, energy she brought to the to the group. You know, I really liked her energy. She was just so spot on and funny and upbeat and kind and yeah. And and it was it was like in her head it said, "Let's not take ourselves too seriously here." Let you know, let's just have fun. And that was what she exuded. And I was watching her and I thought, yeah, it's like in the Shack Shack, really. It's, you know, you know. The reason that I didn't like last season's, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it, was because I found it way too judgmental. I'm talking about the, um, I'm talking about the, um, the throwdown. You know, I just found it too serious and too judgmental. It was like they, they were so harsh and judgy and, and I didn't enjoy it for that reason because I thought, oh, this isn't, this isn't nice to watch, you, you know. It's, um, there's a German, there's a German expression called Schadenfreude, which means you laugh at other people's misfortunes. Schaden being damage and Freude being joy. And the Schadenfreude means that you, you have joy in other people's misfortunes. And I just did not enjoy that kind of harsh judgment and oh no, 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 no. And so I'm really glad I watched it last night because it was a whole other feel. And I'm sure I'm not alone in thinking that. Right, a moment of clarity. Now I can get my, my pen, my doodle pen. I'm gonna get my, I've got two, where's my O one? one just bear with me a minute. I've got a couple of them here. 
these are the set if you're looking for them they're the ones Stuart will tell you where they are they're good they're good they don't work on pottery though I tried them um, you know what I've got to try as well I want to see if that works a sharpie pen on on whether that whether that would work I know what does work is if you take a pencil you can actually engrave if you like I do that but um but to actually leave a black mark I'd have to try the sharp the sharpie pen yeah number one right a moment of clarity I'll get my head out of the way here we are right now let's go again a moment what are you writing in yours I'd love to know what you've decided to say. A moment of, what have you got in yours, in your tag? Hmm? Did you come up with anything cool? Clarity, I'm gonna put a dot rather than a dash. T, clarity, lovely. A moment of clarity, there you go, that looks nice. That'll do. See, it doesn't take long to build up your picture, does it? They're pretty, 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 pretty. Right. There. Yeah, good characters last night. I like, I like, they were, they were all lovely. Very talented people as well. Don't underestimate what they were doing. Right, I'm just gonna get rid of the pencil. So I've got my, I've got my work ready now. It's ready to go. Right, there you go. So now we know how to add script to a tag. Or... That looks nice, doesn't it? What do you think? Let's have a look up close. I think that looks quite pretty. A moment of clarity. Oh, forgive the pun. <laughs> hey. Right, colour next. Colour next bright yeah I mean you could go real gentle but my design is quite bright you know mind you I could do this in pinks and light blues and maybe depends doesn't it hey I've got some lovely glaze stuff downstairs I might show it oh uh, yeah it did it came out really nice but it's more accident you know it's like at the moment it's a little bit hit and hope with me with glaze that's it it's that experimenting again but with this, I, I've got a better idea of what I'm doing. Famous last words. So what colours I decided to go with, I decided to go, I've got three cups. I'm going to go with three different colours, light and dark of each colour. Right, so I like, this is my, my choice, not yours, mine. You pick whatever you fancy. If you want to go with what I'm using, happy days. I'm going to use um, a tealy colour, a turquoisey colour on one cup. I'm going to use orange on another cup. I think teal and orange go together beautifully. Mm. And then I'm going to use a fuchsia, a pink, because teal and pink go together. Orange and pink go together. Teal and pink, they teal and orange, go, they all look, they work beautifully together. OK. I want to show you a piece of artwork that I've prepared tomorrow. You know, we're doing the um, in the. Uh, Oh, yeah, the blog. We're travelling gently through 2021, aren't we? And uh, and we're doing these uh, blog, tutorial-led blogs at the moment. So we're attaching soft sales, really good sales, don't get me wrong, but we're doing, rather than just banging out price-driven product, what we're doing is the team, we've all come together and we've started doing these step-by-step -step tutorials that we're posting on either barbaragrayblog.com, my blog, or on the claritymattersblog.com. The Clarity Matters one is focusing more on parchment and groovy um, tutorials. The girls are really, really coming up with some fantastic work over there. And the thing is, you can, you can go back on the website. Um, Stuart will show you where to find the, um, the projects. If you can't find, you can ping backwards and forwards between the website where all the products are on sale and the tutorials on the, on the blog. So it's ping pong, ping pong. So I'm, I've prepared one. I've got it here, actually. I've prepared a print, a jelly print. Everybody likes a gel press, right? Everybody's always keen on gel press. So I, and, a, and we all love an elephant. So I've done one for tomorrow. And I was, the reason I'm showing you is one, 
um, shouting out about the blogs, right? Because there's a lot of us spending a lot of time doing these tutorials. Um, and also I use my favorite color combination. And that's why I thought, that's what I'm gonna use for my cups. Look, see, so here's my print. This is a gel press print. That's white paint. Just in case you're thinking that that's the stencil, it's not. So if you have a look up close, let's just get my glasses on. I've got so many glasses floating around here. Right, let's have a look up close. And you'll see that that's actually, that's paint. It's a proper print. And if you look at the bottom or you look at the edge, let's go that way. You can see there that it's acrylic paint, you know. But you can see a little bit of the dirt. I love it. I love it. Right. But it just is a very simple process with alcohol ink. And um, but it's a nice print. It's a cool print. I've got another. I've got loads of them there. I've got another one. There. What have we got here? This one. Yeah, these ones are good. Now, these are these are more uh, on. This is cool. Clarity paper, UPO paper. See different. Look. It's the opposite. Now I've printed off the stencil. The stencil. That's pretty cool as well. But what I wanted to show you was actually the the print itself. I've used the colours that we're talking about. I've gone with teal, turquoisey colour, pink and orange, you see? I mean this is a bit arty grungy, but you get the you get how they blend together. Whether don't matter which one sits on next to which one, they go beautifully. Right? So that's good to know. I like see that's what that's the overall impact that it will have if you use pink, orange, and teal. Okay. So look out for that that um, project. Today's a good one. Paul's just about to. Oh, I think it's a Jane one. Jane Telford. Jane. Good morning, Jane. Jane's done a fabulous stamping on parchment. She's bridging that gap. So that'll be interesting as well. Very pretty. But we're looking at colour. So what, what are we going to use? We can use either pergoliners or we can use polychromos. So let's have a look at those two things. Now, as far as the pergoliners go, we've got the B pencils for blending. We've got the A pencils. I already grabbed the pencils. If you've got pergoliners, a lot of you got pergoliners. And what I've done is, oh, different glasses. I've taken the pencils. Let's have a look. And I've got the light blue and the dark blue. There you go. The B pencils, B4, B16. I've got the, the B14, the lovely fuchsia colour, really nice. And the A9, doesn't matter if you use one of the watercolour ones, don't make a blind bit of difference. Then you've got, as long as you don't start throwing water at it, it'd be fine. And then I've got the B9 and the B11. I'm using a red to do the dark area. So those are my six, if you like. One, two, three. I didn't have a teal, so I've got to go with blue, but they work beautifully as well. That looks lovely too. So that was my my suggestion. If you're wondering, if you've got the pergolines, I'll just put them up that end. Right. And then my other set. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. This is my polychromos one. I picked these colours. So I've got cobalt turquoise and cobalt green. So light and dark. Then I used uh, middle purple pink, 125 and 129, light and dark, that one. Although I have to say, I actually really like the fuchsia from the pergolon. And then we've got the 109 and the 115, which is dark chrome yellow and dark cadmium orange. They work lovely together too. So they're the colours I'm going to go with. But I mean, you could pick any colour you like. These are worth having. You get what you pay for. Right, now... So now it's which one first? I'm going to put teal at the bottom, pink in the middle, and orange at the top. Teal, pink, and orange. And I'll start with a lighter colour, and I'm going to start with the orange at the top and work my way down. So the lightest colour is here. And I'm thinking that possibly the best thing to do, let's just get started, and let's just, like, light circular motions. Right, and we're just going to add the colour now. Right, you're going to work in layers, remember. So we just get the colour down so we know what's what, what colour's what. So that's going to be our... won't take long to do this. But it's about getting the colours in the right place, isn't it? So if we do... let's assume that we're going to do the oranges and the yellows in this one. 
then we're going to do the pink in the middle and the teal at the bottom okay so I would suggest just so that we know where we're going take the pink and do the do the handles okay we can also add a little bit of you know we can add a bit of gray to tone it down but let's just get the color in first let's just get the color in it's going to look beautiful so I'm a tassin. We'll get a little bit of light shining on there. So we'll put a bit of colour there. But you know with the thing is we can rub it out as well, can't we? We can get rid of it. There we are. So we've got the pink in that one. Nice. And then we've got the teal in the bottom one. So I'm going to use the light colours, always the light ones, just to so that I know now. Let's get a little bit of a chisel going. There you go. Light circular motions, just like this. Now this is the darker of the darkest of the three colours, isn't it? So I want a bit of light hitting that. I might not. I might avoid that area because I know what I'm going to do. So if you got, it's like the princess and the pea. If you have got bits on your on your surface, they tend to show through, don't they? Right. Let's have a look. There you go. So now we've established which colours are going to go on which one. Yeah, that's for sure. Let's do a little bit more on this one because we know now. And we're using this more for shading now just to see. That'd be cool. It's going to look good. And I don't think we need to go mad you know, with the detail. Let's just get the colour in. Right, that's nice. Okay. Cool, cool. So we've got the handles down anyway, haven't we? Now the handles are round, so that means they're going to be darker here and there. In there. Okay. So you'll see you're going to have a little bit more colour there. Obviously here. Yeah, but we're going to use the darker colour for that. But you can see immediately how you get shade. There's going to be a little bit more shade here. I'm using the lighter colour just to highlight the shade. If you get what I mean, <laughs> highlight the shade. Now that sounds like a contradiction in terms, but I think you know what I mean. So there's going to be shade in there because it's tubular, isn't it? It's not, it's not two-dimensional. So and that's what we're going to try and do is get a little bit of that that feeling in that it's actually tubular so we're going to get a little bit of color through there if you go over the line don't worry about it we can get rid of it with a pencil afterward but the thing is there's no rush i think what we've got to do is accept that there's no rush if we rush it well, why are we rushing it well, what are we in a competition have I got an Irish bird running around here going, hurry up? No. <laughs> I, <love them. laughs> I have to say, I really, really like her. She's fabulous. I go to her class and she's brilliant. I don't even know if she's a potter. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think she is. I don't think she knows what she's doing. <laughs> she's a great character. But what I'm saying is we can take our time with this. You know, let's enjoy it. Let's make it beautiful. Let's be chuffed when it's done. You know, there's no rush. Where are we going? If we do it today and maybe, and then maybe Wednesday as well to make it beautiful. Why not? Why not? You know, I'm happy. I like colouring in. One of my favourite things to do. In fact, I was thinking, because we haven't looked at these postcards, these ones. You know our lovely bird postcards? We've been neglecting these. I could hear this whining in the cupboard, in my drawers here. And then I realised it was these going, show us off, let us out. <laughs> do you remember these? We haven't looked at these for months. So I was thinking, when we've done this, when we've completed this little beauty, I'm thinking we're going to go to our postcards because this is, for me, the relaxing thing. You know, like when, we, when we're doodling, 
we've got to, we've got to do the doodle, haven't we? We've got to do the line art with the postcards, which are beautiful. The line art's already been done. So if you'd like to, I would like to, and I hope you do too. I'd like to just spend a, a week, like three uh, three sessions, just looking at one of these and honing our colouring skills again. You know, just getting our eye in, chillaxing, a little bit of mental yoga, a little bit of colour. Yeah, we could have a look at which colours go together, which colours blend, so you can put them together and they actually, you know that kind of thing? Yeah. So if you haven't got them, get them, because that's what we're going to be using next. And Paul and Stuart, they'll make sure that you get them fast. We're not overwhelmed at the moment. We can send these out to you quickly if you haven't got them yet. No worries. We'll send them out with a tin of polychromos when you get them as well. <laughs> oh, she's ever so cheeky, that Barbara Gray, you know. Right. Come on. Cracking on. Still got half an hour yet. So handles. Let's get the handles right. I think that's a good idea. So what we're doing is we're creating that dimensional look. Slowly does it. Yeah. Now, if we're going to put a pink handle on there and a See how it already starts to look dimensional as soon as you add a little bit of shade. I would, honestly, I would use the lighter colours first, even if it looks a little bit insipid. It just establishes where you're going to be laying down the shadow. Right, let's have a go. Now, if we are going to be doing... There you go, just get your chisel in there. If we're going to be doing colourful handles. See now, do you do, we've been working on this for ages now, do we do the positive or the negative or do we do both? Do we do, um, do we do, do, it sounds like a start of a song, do we do, do we do, do we do like pink in the background and pink in the foreground, do we do pink in the background leave the flowers white, do we do Light in the background, dark in the foreground, like light pink, dark pink. Do you see what I'm getting at? There are so many choices. Do we do a combination? Do we do a bit? So, yeah, lots to think about. And all the time we're thinking about that, we're not thinking about all the other stuff that's going on. I am sick and tired of worrying. I'm literally getting sick and tired of it. And so all the time I can worry about, or not worry, but think about, which pink is going in which zigzag? It just takes me out of my head. i tell you what, I've got a jigsaw puzzle going at the moment. I start. I did a little bit on when, on Saturday. Cool. What a challenge. It's one of those was gidges ones. You know what you... Can't, I can't see what's going on. But I must have sat there for an hour doing this jigsaw on Saturday, and I didn't find a single piece. Not, you know, like, I thought, am I getting simple here? I couldn't, I couldn't get it. So I turned it upside down, right? I turned it upside down like that, the jigsaw, and then suddenly I could start, I could see things. Now that's worrying. <laughs> eh? Yeah. So I want the light to hit this bit here. I'm going to pretend the light's coming there, see? So this is going to be light. I don't want to make that dark. Right. So we know definitely which cups are which colour. I think we've established that, haven't we? Hey? Is that the light one? Yeah, light one. Another layer of this colour. The cheese dome that the fella did yesterday on the throwdown that was yellow. You know, he did that whole set like with bees and that. That was lovely as well. Very simple. Just painted on the glaze, didn't he? I was surprised that they had to dip all their, all their work after they glazed it anyway. I didn't know that either. I didn't know you had to dip it again. Oh. I suppose, does that make it, that must make it... Um, I don't think it makes a dishwasher sad, but it probably makes it um, 
like waterproof. I suppose it's a waterproofing exercise, is it? I don't know. So much to look up and learn. So much to figure out, eh? Yeah. So I was lying in bed this morning at five o'clock. Let's do, I'm going to do the background in light yellow behind these flowers. You with me? Yeah, so I was lying in bed this morning at five o'clock. Wide awake. Trying to decide if, if I'm going to do this cheese dome challenge, right? To myself. It's only for me. I'm not going to. It's only for me. What's my theme going to be? You know? What's my theme going to be? What am I going to? And I was thinking about that and I thought, wow, I really like carving, carving clay, you know? So I was thinking I'll probably go more. Oh, I'm going to give my, I'm going to have a lesson in how to carve clay. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So watch this space. And I I don't I don't know if I want to make it all colourful. I'm not sure. I don't know. I did like the Arizona one. The I did like that, the Welsh girls one. That was beautiful. Do you know with the Route 66? See that spoke to me. The Route 66 one. Where she, that was very clever. So I mean if you did, if you didn't watch it, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? It was the um the throwdown. The Great Pottery Throwdown on Channel 4 last night was the first of the new series. Highly recommend it. I bet you can watch it on Catch Up. And even if you're not into pottery, it was fun, wasn't it? It's very, um, yeah, very interesting. It was interesting. And if you're into pottery, it's really interesting. Right. And you know, I nearly left the room when it came to who they were going to eject, you know. I thought, I, I, and what's wrong with me, you know. But I actually was very tempted to get up and leave because I thought, I don't want to see the disappointment, you know, I don't want to feel it. But I knew it was going to be anyway. I think it was pretty clear. Um, yeah, funny, isn't it, how we... How we react to things. I'm super sensitive at the best of times, but I'm super, super sensitive at the moment. Are you like that a little bit as well? I could cry at the drop of a hat. I get chest pains at the f flick of a switch. It's rubbish, really. I really do. Anxiety levels are through the roof. But there you go. Got to go with it, really, I think. I think the answer is to just go with the flow. You know what I mean? If you if your chest pains are through the roof, well then just rather than fight it and keep questioning it, just go with it. Don't drink coffee and drink chamomile tea, as my mother would say, and just accept that that is what it is at the moment. I think all the time I obsess about the fact that I'm getting chest pains or I'm getting anxious or it just I'm just throwing a light on it and I'm just. I'm highlighting it in my head, so it just gets magnified, gets worse, you know? So, distraction is the key, and again, and once I say, twice I say, and thrice I say, this kind of thing, what we're doing here in the Shack Shack, this is the perfect distraction technique. This stuff, look. Just doodling. Colouring in, being creative. Get with your hands, get out of your head. And I'm so concentrating on what I'm going to do and which pink I'm going to use and where I'm going to put the shadow. Blah, 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 blah. Right, doesn't that look pretty now, coming together? Um, yeah, I'm so focused on this that I don't worry about. I've stopped, my chest pains go away because I'm thinking about this. The more I think about the chest pains, the more they come back. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong, wrong, wrong. I've always, that is my default. I get chest pains. It's There's nothing sinister going on. That's just the way other people come out in a rash. You know, other people get headaches. 
I get chest pains. It's a way of life. I just accept that that's the way it is. The doctor said it's, it's just anxiety. Nothing you can do about it, Grey. Except not worry about it. The more you worry about it, the worse it gets. Well, that makes sense. Let's get a little bit of that grey going. I love to get a little bit of pink going in here. Just a little bit of that. I'm still using only the light pink, though. Hmm? They look pretty. Turn it round. Put a little bit of pink in here. What colours have you used? What combination of colours are you using? Be interesting to see what you're going with. There's so many options, aren't there? Colours are to be used, my friends, eh? There you go. Everything all right? There we are. Yeah, it's going to look super, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait for these underglaze pens to arrive. Well, there's a game changer. I wonder if they work. <laughs> I wonder if they do what it says on the tin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There we are. That's nice, isn't it? Light turquoise next on the th next one. Here we go. Cool. Slowly does it. Yeah. What I think is impressive with what we're doing here is that we drew these, you know. If you're colouring in, I mean, if you're not, if you're just listening and hanging out with us, that's lovely too. But if you're colouring in your artwork, let me put the emphasis on your artwork. It's not a download. It's not a stamp. It's yours. And that is pretty impressive, you know. And if you say, oh, yeah, but mine's not as good as yours. Well, it's yours. And it's this is mine. And the good or bad or better, it's different. That's all. Isn't don't be judging. There are no judges in this building. Remember when we started? No experts and no judges. See, small circular motions. Just fill that area. Slowly does it. Lightly as well. See, because you get a nice blend, don't you? We can always use the blending pen. In the end, when we're, when we're finished... To get a real glazy look, glaze as in glossy, if you like, that's the fabulousness, <laughs> if that's a word, of the um, of the polychromos and the blending pens in the. Actually, I want to go into that again. Um, in the pergoliners, the blending pens and the polychromos, because when we when we um, blend them and we buff them or burnish them with a blending pen, which we will do at the end, they come out glossy, don't they? They shine, which is going to look smashing. It doesn't matter if you're, you... You don't have to be using glossy card or paper. I'm just using a bit of copy paper here. But I know that if I, if I press hard... Let me show you. This is just a bit of copy paper too. But if I press hard on here... Now, this is a little bit extreme, Barbara, but you'll get the picture. Now... At the moment, if I press hard, let me just come in a bit and you'll see it's just matte. Yeah, it's just matte. But eventually, you can come in again, press a bit harder, another layer on top, and you'll see a sheen will start to start to start. A sheen will start to start, okay? When you started the sheen starting, <laughs> then take your blending pen and you'll see. When you burnish it like this, you can use the blending pen or you can use even a tissue if you've got big big areas. I mean, we've got to use the pens. These pens are brilliant for this because they get in the tiny little areas in between the flowers and that, you see. This is what this is great for because it goes right in, in between the flowers, see. But what I want to show you is when you smooth it out, 
and you redistribute the pigment, you, you're literally, you're burnishing. I can feel that it's getting shiny. Watch, now I wonder if I can, if you can see this. Just on that, let me let it focus. Can you see how it's gone shiny now? We've glazed it. You see, these ones, they're not shiny yet. Let me show you. They're not shiny. We haven't burnished them. But as soon as you burnish and you add depth and enough pigment with these, and this works with the pergoliners and the polychromos. That's what they're about. They're oil-based pencils, so they work when you burnish them. There, you can see it now. See that? Oh, see, I think that's fabulous. So when I say we're glazing our cups here, we are. We've just got to, you do it in layers. That was the other thing about the pottery that I, when I was watching it yesterday, when they were just dumping their, their artwork in the glaze at the end, I thought, well, that's rubbish. That's not, you know, I mean, I know it's television, but you could potentially wreck your work by doing that. Any, any, any potter watching that winced. I know that, I know I did. I was like, oh no, don't do that. After all that hard work, you could really wreck it. Yeah. Strange that they insisted on doing that. But there you go. It's telly, isn't it? Good results, though. Right. Now let's have a look where we stand. What have we got so far? It's coming together nicely. Look, gently does it, gently does it, isn't it? Very gentle. We're getting a little bit of colour going in. One thing at a time, you know, because I, I think what we could do as well is we can figure this out in phases. So now at the moment, for example, I'm colouring in the bits that are clearly not going to be white, right? But now, for example, I could say, see, I could mix the colours up, but I think that would be too gaudy. Uh, so I'm going to stay with this yellow and let's say now I'm going to start thinking about which parts of the pattern I want to colour in. So that looks pretty cool. I like that. I don't want to do the whole lot. I made it. I, I just want to, I want to enjoy the journey. So I don't want to do the whole lot. I want to just have a look at which bits I'm, which bits am I actually colouring in here with the light yellow. See, that looks nice. It looks nice when you take the out, the negative. We've been talking about this a lot, haven't we? About using the negative space to make the other. See, that looks really pretty. Doesn't it? See what I'm getting at? So it's it's about see now with this for example this area here do you want to do you want to color in the bit around the outside or the dots I'm going with a bit around the outside because I think this would be too 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 white right so I'm going to go in here with my yellow there and I think what happens is as you as you build up it's a learning thing as well because you go oh Maybe we'll do all the flowers and that dark in a minute, right? In fact, we probably will. But the thing is, as you're doing this, you'll go, oh, that's interesting. I like that look. And make a note of it or take a photo of it before you proceed. And then you'll remember, hmm, it looks nice when it's just white in the background. Yeah. Just take your time. Slowly does it. Because I think that's what the the object of this exercise is. It slows down your breathing. It gets you relaxing. It does. Lovely, lovely, lovely. See, I think what would look good as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna push the boat out now, just because I want to go with the the dark colour. Where's my tester one? Just on the yellow. And I want to sh see if I come in this area here. So this is the rim. And I want to just bring the darker colour in. And I'm bringing in the sweeping. Remember that the, the light's going to hit 
the rim, isn't it? So let's have a look. As you come round, I reckon that's where the light's going to hit. So you just gently take a... So you can sharpen it or you can just flick the chisel round until you've got the sharper area. Just go like that. See, on that side, it's it's flat, so you get a gentle side. But when you if you've got that on one side, then when you flick the pencil over, you're definitely going to have a sharp line on the other side. So, And that's the one you're going to get into these tight spaces with. Is that okay? Good. Nice. Then we'll come it up. Lent gently does it. Yes, yes, yes. That's looking good. Yeah, I like this. And I know where I'm going with the dark pencil as well. I think I'm going to use the, the darker pencil to bring in these areas here. Just to give you an idea of where we're going. There's so many options, aren't there? But you get that tight pencil in there. And I'm leaning on my groovy guard just to stop my hands getting all sweaty. Shreddy. There we go. We'll just add a little bit of depth there, just so it's a little bit of shadow. Nice, nice. Gently does it. Hey. Okay. All good. Slowly, slowly, eh? Good. And then it's a total switch off, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that's round the back. There you go. Starting to come together, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Starting to come together. And I think this one here, I don't know if I can. I've got maybe I'll have to put a little bit more black in there. I might put a bit of black in there. You know, this uh, alternating, that might look rather nice. You know, when you take, but if I'm going to do that, I can tell you now, let me show you a trick. If that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the, the yellow down first. This is a lot easier. You would do this, if you were going to make this white, let's say you were going to make this white. You put down the white pen, like the Posca pen. Yeah, we did this, didn't we? We did this before. You'd lay down the Posca pen first, and then you'd go over with the black. You wouldn't put the black down and then try and get in. And it's the same, in my humble opinion. I mean, I'm no expert, but if I was going to... Look, if I'm going to put the orange down, or the yellow, I'm using the, the lightest yellow now, right? So I'm going to put that down along that line there. And I'm going to do that before... I go back in with my little, I'm not going to try and put yellow in between the black dots because I know for a fact that it will smear. So for example, just to show you, give you an example, if I, now I'd go in and add the little, the tiles, once I've done my yellow. I mean, these are tiny tiles, but this will look very pretty when it's done. Every other one in black. Call my eyes out. Either I've got to drop my chair down so that my nose is closer to the paper or I'm going to have to get some new glasses. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> this might be the answer. I think this might be the answer. <laughs> I can actually... I just come closer to the page. Hey. <laughs> I can't reach that. Okay. Do you know that's better? <laughs> that's much better. It actually is. So the idea, right? <laughs> get closer to the later. If I show you the black and white checker, because this is really nice. Oh, wrong camera. Sorry, 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 sorry. Now have a look up close, and then you can see. So you put the yellow in before you put the black in, 
and that's the way to make it pop. You see? It'd be very difficult to do it the other way around. There we are. So, what is the time? Is it already? Good grief. Where does the time go? Well, I know, I waffle too much. It's all right. We're here to keep each other company. My tea's gone cold. What about yours? We've done loads today. We've established what colours. We've established what we're going to write on our tag. I want to see that. I want to see what colours you're going to be using. And then when we get back together on Wednesday, I, I haven't got time. I'm too, I haven't got time now. I've got work to do. But So I'm going to join in exactly where I left off. I'm not going anywhere else. I, I may do one cup to completion just to decide what's light, what's dark. I may do the yellow one at the top and then and then we can fall in with the with the pink and the teal. How's that sound? And then that sh might, might take us, we should be finished on Wednesday, but it may take us through till Friday. And I'm not dragging it out. It takes as long as it takes this stuff, you know. It does. So Stuart, thank you very much for your help. Uh, don't forget to head on over to the um, Clarity Matters blog to see what Jane's got in store for us today. Um, if you sign up to our newsletter, then we'll automatically send you an email with a direct link. So that might be something that Stuart could help you with. If you don't get our newsletter, you maybe should consider doing that because it certainly does. We, we're not stalking you. We're not going to pound you and pummel you with, with offers. It's nothing to do with that. We just sh show you where we're at, where the tutorials are, where the special offers are. Um, so yeah, Ask Stuart, he'll give you the link to sign up to our newsletter. That might be a really good idea. Then you get our, you get our directive e-shots. Uh, other than that, do us a favour, like, follow and share this Shack Shack Live. And uh, thank you very much for your company. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Bye bye now. Lots of love. <laughs>